We're on the move through Northern Europe and currently facing an extreme heat wave. In many parts of Europe, temperatures are already above 30 degrees this morning and it's predicted to get even hotter. Living in a tiny metal box can be extremely challenging and even dangerous in this environment. But we have crossed more climates than most. And along the way, we've learned how not only to survive, but thrive living the van life in the summer heat. 37 degrees Celsius, great day to be living outdoors, I tell you. We are attempting to drive around the world. You guys are invited too, so subscribe and buckle up. It's one heck of a ride. Today was going to be an extremely hot day so uh, when we came into this car park to park for the night we looked at the compass to see which side was east um, and where the sun would be rising and so we parked initially over here which would have been in full view of the sun the sun is rising early because it's summer and we would have got really hot and it would have been the thing that woke us up the heat in the van we were able to get a bit more shade and uh, we were able to have an extra hour in bed in the morning whilst it was still comfortable. I mean, we were still awake, but it, we weren't forced out of the van, having to open all of the windows and everything like that, so. What's the temperature in here? It's still 20, oh. still 26 degrees. What time is it now? Nine o'clock. Yeah, we would have been up at about 7.30 if we'd have been parked in the sun. Yeah. Top tip for lazy van life people who like lions on the weekend. Of course, avoiding the sun is a great strategy, but obviously there will be times when we have to park directly in the sun. This is where the insulation we installed does a fantastic job at reducing the heat that does make it inside the combi. I did a lot of testing whilst building our tiny studio and I won't bore you with the details, but basically radiant barrier insulation needs an air gap between the outside of the van and the foil. When it's done correctly, it makes a massive improvement on the temperature inside the combi. But you know what makes even more difference? Paint. You wouldn't believe how much cooler the white parts of our van are compared to the blue. It's astonishing and something to keep in mind. Out of everything that we're gonna be talking about in this video, the most important thing to keep the van cool is to block out the sun from the windows. Really, we, it's made such a huge difference in keeping cool in the van. Um, we've been using these for the last, so since we started, and we made these specifically to fit our windows. Uh, it's made of like just insulation material. Um, so we keep the foil on the outside to block out, to help block out the sun. And on the inside, it's just an, a nicer color. So it's not so intense inside. It makes an amazing difference. Like it, when we have the windows, covers down you can really feel the heat coming in through all the windows that are around the combi so we've put magnets around the outside so it's just really easy to use it just kind of clips on the inside and it stays on really well ben's mum did an amazing job and took weeks making these like she did an incredible job so thanks to norma for making these for us they've been working like a treat Thirty-seven degrees Celsius, ninety-nine degrees Fahrenheit. It's a flipping hot day, in anyone's books. Whew. Great day to be living outdoors, I tell you. Our main water tank feeds into our shower system here. When we have a hot shower, when the weather's not quite as nice as this, we have to remove the shower, but because I'm not gonna be using any gas, I'm just gonna be having a room temperature shower and just pull out this straight out of the back of the van, which is much easier. Yeah, 
So on the Combi we have uh, limited space, but we have a 37 litre water tank down there which is basically just for showers and dishes and stuff. We use a lot more water in the summer. So we have these collapsible water bags. They're really strong. This one holds about 10 liters. Um, and that means that we can extend our water capacity if we want to stay longer off grid somewhere. We can carry about 60 liters extra water for really hot days like this. We have a whole system overview video about our, our water system for extended off grid travel. So if you want to see that, I'll link it up there. A hack that we use to keep cool in summer in the combi when we don't have air conditioning is we put like a, a wet cloth in the freezer and it keeps really cool for a while so you can just when, you, when you're sleeping especially and it gets really hot you just put it on you with the fan on you and it's really cool nice to just put it on your face and cool down so cool one more time cool 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 cool, cool. We also have, we never used to have a freezer or a fridge in our um, other van, so this is a game changer for when it's hot because we get to have ice, which is great, and ice cream too. So we're so lucky, aren't we? Blessed. Blessed. So we've got lots of tricks and hacks um, that we have learned along the way living in a van and we put it all into a van life guidebook for you guys. So if you're interested in knowing how to keep cool and warm um, in those winter days and summer days then go check out that book because there's lots of, of uh, information there for you to learn about how to deal with these conditions. Go check it out if you want. Or don't. Or don't. Or don't. Or keep watching our videos and we'll just give you more tips and tricks along the way. Yeah, oh dear. Sounds good. We've also got one of these little fans set up the back here for Alaska when we're driving so we keep the window open for her as well and it's a little fan going to keep her cool. So nice. Oh my pants are still hanging up outside. These side windows in the combi are really great like they make a big difference keeping it cool do they have a name a special name these side windows yeah they probably do I, i'm not sure what they are but they're, they're really cool like it's they, like our air conditioning basically it is it? like our air conditioning yeah but they are really dangerous <laughs> because i we had a bee just come straight through like the, obviously the windows are shaped so like the wind comes straight on you but then we collect all the bugs along the way and a bee <laughs> a bee came straight in the window and stung me on the finger. Yeah, I know. Leah's been so, what the hell? so paranoid about bees and wasps and then one actually stung her straight away, like landed and stung her. Yeah. I don't know if you can get that. Anyways, dangerous. Dangerous air conditioning. So the, the um, heating and cooling in the combi is rather limited. We have a two knobs and it just opens a flap in the front, lets air in, and that's about as efficient as the cooling in the combi gets. And of course, when we stop moving, it gets really hot really quick. Living without AC might seem horrible to some of you, but we've learned strategies to maximize cooling in the combi. We're in maximum cooling mode in the combi. We've got every single window open, the back door open, the fan up. Fan's not on, but and the shade's out, the, the awning's out, but it, it has made a huge difference. It's nice to get this cross breeze. We haven't really had to go to this extreme of having all of the doors and everything open until this point. It's nice to test it out to see how cool and comfortable it is in here because like all of the walls and everything are, you can tell that the insulation has worked really well. So it's, it's definitely kept it down, the temperature down is good. So I think when we do get to hotter places, um, we'll be able to survive. When the day gets really hot, it's common sense to minimise the amount of time you spend sitting in the van. You can catch a breeze in the shade in a hammock or learn from the Spanish and have a siesta until the day cools down and you feel a little bit more productive. In extreme situations, we find an excuse to run errands where there is AC, something like a supermarket.
Here in the Netherlands, the people seemed especially grateful for the excellent summer weather and looked to be spending their time as close to the water as possible. Okay, Leah is taking time out. So, Alaska, you are navigating. We are about to go and meet a combi crew member because they have a very special package for us. We're also about to drive across this incredibly unique road. It just juts out right across to the Amsterdam mainland. There's probably a better word from that, but it's extremely long and looks like it just goes out to sea, so I can't wait to drive this. And at sunset, no less. Looks like the bridge has just gone up below. Jesus Christ, how many people are around? That's where all the Dutch people are. The bridge has just gone up behind us, which means there's no traffic coming through. I was the last one to go across before they raised the bridge to allow the boats to come through. It's quite impressive watching them do that. We don't have one of those in Jersey, so it's quite cool. The Alfsleidijk isn't your typical motorway. The road extends for 32 kilometers or 20 miles and serves as a dam which protects inland Holland from flooding during storms, which is important because nearly 17% of the Netherlands is actually below sea level. With oceans for miles and nobody else on the road, this was an unforgettable drive. Look at this. It's magnetic, right? <laughs> Marcel's got something that we haven't even got. There's Marcel. Hi. <laughs> we are in the North Netherlands uh, with Marcel. And, sorry, I didn't get your name. Karin. Karin. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, I had to get a drone sent somewhere and Marcel has kindly allowed me to have that sent. So we are back airborne again. Uh, Marcel also has something else really cool. Look at this. It's getting dark, but hopefully you can see this. Nice. Combi. Destination is on the left. One night, Alaska. One night. Come on, you big suck. That is what you call a circuit in Australia, right? Yeah. Leah, look at the front of the car. Oh my, oh my God, what the hell happened? I know, I hit a storm. Holy moly, is that mosquitoes? I crossed the dike at night. Before I was getting back in this combi, we really needed to clean this up. absolutely nailed by these bugs. I don't think they're mosquitoes, but coming across the dike was um, an impressive drive both ways. Going there, the sunset was just phenomenal. Coming back at night time, the bugs were like nothing I've ever seen before in my entire life. It was absolutely insane. Even crazier than Alaska, would you believe? And Alaska was pretty bad. So time to get this cleaned up. We would have loved to stay longer in the Netherlands. The people were really friendly and the towns that we passed through looked lovely. It's definitely still on our bucket list. We're hoping to come back someday soon, but for now we're heading to Germany. But we are taking a few souvenirs with us. Just cooled down so much, the storm's coming in. It's been such a hot week. So Marcel sent us away with a care package from the Netherlands because we can't spend a lot of time in the Netherlands and unfortunately we'd like to spend longer so thanks for that yeah cheers Marcel we'll see what he, he's given us ah look at this beer 10 percent it's practically wine Ooh. Whoa. Oh, that's cool what kind of cheese is it is that like a um, wheat bread it looks like it's got caramel or something mm. in it 
Aww, what is that? How do you say that, it. guys? The best place, bottom for some bottom for some. So one of the most important things about nighttime preparation to keep the sleeping area cool is airflow. It's the best thing you can do. And so we like to keep um, the, the air flowing in one side of the combi and out the other side. So we have these vents that basically jam at the top of the, the window, very easy to install. Oh yeah, it's gonna rain, it's raining. So Hi. basically we can have this out whilst it's raining, we can have the window open um, and it doesn't allow any mosquitoes in because there's a mesh on the other side. So it's really, Secure, can't be pushed in, and uh, yeah, we can have our windows open, and it's nice and cool, which is nice. And I won't be turned. You and I should be the ones to learn. The main thing we try to do when it's uh, really hot outside is we camp near a body of water, or at least we go there for the day and cool off. When we're camping next to a body of water, we just freshen up in the water, which means we save water in our van because we don't use a shower as much. And so we are able to stay in place a lot longer. The good thing about a thunderstorm is that everybody evacuates <laughs> the lake and the beach. We've got it all to ourselves. Top COVID travel tip. Today's bath is in the thunderstorm in a lake in Germany. It's quite warm in the lake, isn't it? Oh, sorry about that. Where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? This would be all right, by me. It's worth mentioning that all of these facilities are in a free German campsite. Like that whole lake behind me, these showers here. Like... It's really coming down. Oh, it's really coming down out there. It's a nice proper summer storm. It's the first one we've had in the whole time, the whole summer. Proper storm. This fan plays a massive part in our ventilation and keeping us cool. Um, and the reason we, we actually had a, a perfectly good, fantastic fan, we took it out and we put in a Max fan. Um, this model we will link below because it's the, the least moving parts and it's the cheapest, but is absolutely essential for van life because we can have this open when it's raining like this because of, of the design of it. It's crucial for keeping the airflow going through the van um, and it's also great for when we're cooking and particularly on days like this when it's really hot you often get a summer storm like we're having right now and the ability to be able to suck all of the moisture out of here is really important to stop condensation and mold which definitely happens. So this is the main fan for bringing in the fresh air to the van and contrary to popular belief most of the time we have it sucking out not blowing in the only time that we have it blowing in is if I'm standing directly underneath it and just got blasting it on my face so basically what happens is our max fan is pulling air in we have the side windows here which are the only way that the air can get into the combi so the air the hot air is rising in the combi it's being sucked out through the fan the cool air is being sucked in through the windows and is falling down through here forcing more hot air up and it just goes like that and of course we have the windows in the front so the air can also come through here and be sucked up from the front it's just delightful honestly it's very surprising how how hot of a temperature we can stand in this combi with all of the provisions that we have it's extremely comfortable in here the fan on the roof is great for keeping out the main heat that accumulates in this van but um, it doesn't really send air over your body and that's the thing that makes the biggest difference when it's really hot so we have these usb powered fans the low powered fans so they don't have a, a big drawer in the battery and we can have them super close to us and they're not very noisy and they're safe and everything so these are brilliant for van life because they run off of usb and it's got two speeds you can move it in any angle and you can have it close to you at night time so that you can sleep well it's absolutely a game changer for van life i recommend you get one of these 
It's handy to have a, those fans, especially when you're working. Like we try not to work on days where it's really hot because computers just generate so much heat in the van. Liam, and do you know how hot my computer is running at right now? 99 degrees Celsius, like literally one degree below boiling point. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Our, it's our, almost shut down. Yeah, our computers overheat all the time when it's too hot in here. So we try our best to uh, maybe work in the afternoon when it's not so hot. And uh, it doesn't always work, but oh, the wind is a bit hectic. <laughs> this is mental. First sign of autumn for us, so it's pretty awesome to be here in Germany. You! So one of the things about parking in the shade is obviously you're not getting any solar, which is a bit of a problem on a day like today when there's, it's a little bit cloudy actually, and there's not a lot of solar up for grabs. So you've got two options. The one that we adopted was the provisioning option, which meant that we basically provisioned our system to be able to handle more time in the shade parked under a tree, under a bridge, just basically out of the direct sun. So we calculated that in when we were basically planning the system. If you're building a system, we have a free calculator that comes with our guide to off-grid electrical systems. That you can basically put in um, how long you want to spend out of direct sun without running out of your batteries, what your average uh, load is for all of your appliances, and then you can figure out what kind of setup you need for your own off-grid electrical system. The other option, if you aren't going to provision a big system, is to have uh, portable solar panels, which basically uh, allow you to put the solar panels out to the side in a, in a sunspot and allow you to charge whilst you're parked in the shade, which is really, really handy. The downside is obviously you have to set up the panels every time and that's why we adopted the fixed panels so that we could basically be charging all the time, even when we're parked at a shop. It also provides shade on a day like this and believe me, having fixed panels on the roof makes a massive difference. Taught Alaska a new trick, and who says you can't teach old dog, dogs new tricks? Alaska can now get this stick off the bottom of the water. <laughs> oh, it's gone out of it, see? Trying to swallow. Yeah, look, look, she's got it. She felt it on the bottom with her feet. Now she's trying to grab it up. She goes under and comes up with the stick! Yay! Why are you in? What the heck? Who says you can't teach old dogs new tricks? That's my girl. We're continuing to push east on our attempt to drive around the world, and who knows what the road has in store for us. But that is a story for next time. <laughs>